Hey everyone, this is Mark, and in today's video, we're gonna take our website sitemap to the finish line with some planning, sketching, and designing. Are you ready? Let's go. So welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the four-step planning sequence for figuring out your website sitemap. If you missed that, be sure and click on the card right there. This time around, we're going to apply all that and plan, sketch, and design out the sitemap for the Akamai website's sitemap. And I love me some just sketching and designing, so can't wait to get into this. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who the hell are you guys? Well, first of all, it's not guys, Thor. It's Guy. And my name is Mark Moran, and I have been a web designer for 20 plus years, and I also teach web design at the University of Hawaii, West Oahu. Akamai Websites is where I help new and aspiring web designers level up the professional and freelancing game with tips, techniques, and tutorials to help them go from design blunder to god of thunder. If that all sounds like something you're interested in, I mean the web design part, not the lame jokes part, then be sure and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for notifications, and hit that wonderful thumbs up like button as well. So in this video, I want to apply all those things we talked about in the last video to plan, design, and sketch out my sitemap for the Akamai website's sitemap. So let's start with part one, which is talking about the content and functionality of the website. Now, before we dive too deep, it's important to note that not everything applies to the website you might be building. All of these steps, it's more like a buffet than a recipe. Kind of pick the things that you think are relevant to the meal that you're trying to create versus following it step by step. So question one is, what is the biggest pain point? Now, Sammy the student, who is my user persona, which I talked about a lot in this video, his biggest pain point is that he lacks knowledge and experience with being a professional web designer. And he has a bit of imposter syndrome because while he works as a visual designer, he doesn't really know the web stuff very well. He always feels like he's missing elements from his toolkit because he doesn't really know how to make a website. And he's not a coder, not necessarily interested in becoming a full front-end developer. He just wants to learn how to build a website to take his vision and put it on the screen. The second question is, what solutions do I provide to help with those pain points? So what I like to do is a bit of card sorting, and I'm gonna use Trello for this. It's not exactly a card sorting app, but it works for this because you can drag around things pretty easily and label them. So we're gonna brainstorm a list of all the possible solutions I might have for Sammy the student. So like I said, Sammy really has two main pain points, a lack of knowledge and a lack of experience. One requires information, and the other requires context. So with a lack of knowledge, the solutions I have for that are articles, videos, tutorials, uh, courses I could build, downloadable resources, resource lists, product reviews, design course reviews, service reviews, and provide systems and frameworks for designing. I could build a podcast, I could write a book, I could do one-on-one -on -one mentoring or group coaching. For pain point number two, the lack of experience, what Sammy needs is some context for how all this stuff works together. Some of these are the same, but I could provide articles, videos, tutorials. I could do consulting and coaching. I could have a course. I could provide downloadables. I could do samples of client meetings or walkthroughs, uh, scripts for calls with clients, resources, freelance course reviews, systems and frameworks again. And I could provide calls and meetings and I could build a community uh, to help people with accountability. So that's a lot of things. Let's break it into some main topics. The first topic is my process for designing and building websites. Uh, that's the, those are the four Ds I talked about before. If you missed that, click on the card up in the screen. But that's discovery, design, development, deployment, and also care plans. What do you do after you've launched the website? Another big topic is working with clients. Uh, that's with freelancing, building your business, how you communicate with clients, and outsourcing work to other freelancers. I could also talk about design and web development software, talk about relevant technology and hardware for web designers, and also talk about a skill pathway, how to level up and learn from being a designer or a non-designer to become a web designer. So I have a lot of solutions here on cards and I'm sort of organizing them based on these topics that I've set up. So now we're at part two, which is to determine the best structure for the content and functionality for the website. The question here is what is the shortest distance from their problem to my solution? So I need to know what are the possible delivery methods I could use for these solutions? And this is a mix of content versus features. 
which feature or delivery method works for the type of content that has the solution I can provide. So for this step, I'm gonna list out all the possible content types and feature types. So here we can see I'm typing out a list of all the possible content types. We have articles, videos, resources, downloadables, reviews, newsletters, framework, all sorts of stuff that I could use to provide content and solutions to people who visit Akamai websites. I'm also listing out different feature types. We have uh, pages and posts, we have embedded videos, we have the Amazon web service for uh, digital downloads, we could do an e email service like MailChimp, we could use custom post types to set up very specific types of content on the site, we could implement an LMS or a learning management system, we could set up a membership system, an audio player, all sorts of stuff that we could build to help deliver that content. So the next step is to take that list of content and those list of features and see where they meet together. So as you can see, I'm listing out all the different content types and I'm going to list the types of technology that can be used to provide that content to the end user. For example, with articles, I would have blog posts. For videos, I might have a custom post type video library or embed them into blog posts. Uh, for tutorials, I could have another custom post type tutorial library and also put them into blog posts. There's a lot of different ways I can provide this information. Uh, with downloadables, I could have an email opt-in, I could put them in the blogs, I could have an Amazon AWS download link. So this is just really a global look at all the types of content and all the types of ways that they can be delivered. The next question I want to ask is how do all these solutions relate to each other? Here I want to know if there's any logical progression from one step to another or from one solution to another. Are there any contingencies that need to be put in place? So here we are on my iPad and I'm just going to sketch out some possible solution pathways. Pathway one is if they come to YouTube first and they see a video, they might want to download a resource related to that video. I can have them go through an email opt-in, send them that uh, free resource, and then they would be subscribed to a newsletter where I can share the latest videos and web articles to help them with their journey. Another possible path might be that they organically found the blog or the vlog on the website through Google search. In that case, they might look at the blog, read the article, and then see a video related to that article. That might take them to the YouTube channel and then back to path one. It seems like the common element here is that they end up on the email list where I can help engage with them and give them new information and new resources as I develop them so that they can be in the know with what's happening with Akamai websites. I also want to think about the contingencies for the content and for the features. For the content, if you think about, for example, the downloadables, in order to have downloadables, I need a related post that talks about what that downloadable is, and I also need a place to host it, like AWS. For some of these, I actually need an audience before I can build out the thing. If I want to build a course, I need to know what the audience, what Sammy, the student, needs in that course. Some of these require things that don't exist yet. For example, an audience. As I build an audience with Akamai websites, I can ask them and query them for things that they need and then build those things. For example, a course. I can't build a course yet because I don't know what Sammy the student needs. So once I have a lot of Sammy the students in my audience, I can ask them and say, hey, what would you like to learn? What can I teach you? And then based on that, I can build a course or build materials or build functionality on the website that serves them. With feature type contingencies, again, some things require an audience. For example, if I want to build a learning management system with a membership, I need members, which means I need an audience. So that comes first. And even though I'm not going to be building out a lot of these things initially, it's good to know what's required first and then second and then third so that I have a game plan about how I'm going to release things in the future. Since a lot of those require other things to be in place first, we're going to put those on sort of a future roadmap of the website. And that's basically part three, figuring out what you're going to launch with and what you're not going to launch with yet. And part of this is thinking about what launch content will provide the greatest help to Sammy the student. If I'm in a hurry to launch the website, I might separate things out to implement after the site is up and to put up at launch. Or I might do things in stages where I start with a landing page and then add in a blog and then add in features and then add in other content types over time. But right now I'm going to go into Google Docs and write out a bullet point list of all the things that I could possibly have on this website. But I'm going to write out some ideas on how I might want to categorize the content and features I came up with. And of course, many people can just jump straight ahead to the sitemap sketching phase, uh, ignoring all of this earlier work of content and functionality. But for the sake of being as thorough as possible, I wanted to include other possible steps you could go through to narrow in on the specific content and features you would have on your website. And to be honest, this sort of thing is probably best suited for your own website versus one for a client. They would already have specific ideas for what they want. You need to listen to them, 
absorb what they're saying, and create a sitemap based on their needs and your understanding of how content and structure works. So, like I said before, this is a buffet, not a recipe. Pick the parts that work for you and just keep the rest next to the tiny corn and the melon pieces sitting over at the salad bar. So this part of the process is where I map out every possible thing I would like to have on the website at some point. There's a lot more here that I'm probably going to launch with. I have all the blogs and videos of different types. I have the download sections. I have courses. I have a community group, an opportunity to get coaching. So there's a lot of things here I'm not going to launch with, but I'd like to have the whole game plan in mind before I figure out what I'm launching with. So now that we have an idea of things that are going to go on the website, I want to sketch out a sitemap. Earlier I talked about launching a site in stages with the landing page first and the fuller site second. And I think I'm going to do that for this project. So for all my websites, I'm going to release the site as a landing page with a couple other pages as well. But then I'm also going to map out the structure of the site as it will be once it launches fully a little bit later. So let's jump on the iPad and sketch out the initial, I'll call it the beta version of the website, as well as the full version of the website that will launch a couple months after that. So an initial version of the beta launch is pretty easy. I'm just going to have about three pages. One is the main landing page, one is the resource page, and one is my about page. I also like to make a short list of things I want to have on each of these pages. So for the landing page, I'll have a mission statement, maybe a video introduction, a call to action to go to YouTube to subscribe, some social media links, and an email sign-up form. On the resource page, I'll list some products I use, services I use, and courses I recommend for people to level up. And on the about page, I'll have information about me, my professional history, some personal information, where I currently work, where I teach, and also a contact form. And probably some frequently asked questions as well. So now that that's done, I'm gonna sketch out the full website. And for this, I'm gonna have six main pages or site sections, home, blog, or videos, resource page, the downloads page, a website challenge page, which I'll talk about in a moment, and my about page. So for the home page, I'm going to have a call to action, a video intro, and some YouTube information, as well as my mission statement. There will be some global elements too. I'll have social media, I'll have an email sign up form, and some global navigation. In the blog or video section, I'll do reviews of software, hardware, and services. I'll talk about website, UI, UX design processes. I'll talk about site building with WordPress, talking about plugins and page builders. I could do reviews on new technology and I could talk about coding. And also I want to have a section on freelancing and working with clients. Under resources, again, I'll have products, services, and courses that I recommend or that I think will help Sammy the student. In the download section, I'll have free resources to help them with frameworks, maps, XD files, etc. And I'll also have a few opt-in gifts to help with my email list building. Some things that they can use and download to help them get their feet off the ground. The website challenge area is basically an email series with guided information on website building or developing your client systems. So it might be seven days to build your first website or seven days to go pro with clients, something like that where it gives them daily tasks and things to do and essentially a checklist to help them accomplish a goal. So they would subscribe to that email list and every day they would get an email helping them progress in that journey. And finally the about page with my information and FAQ and contact info. All right, not too bad. Now that I have a sketch done, I want to jump into Adobe XD and really flesh it out as if I was going to deliver this to a client. Now I'll speed up this process a bit so you can enjoy the beauty of a design time-lapse video and I will see you on the other side.
Okay, there we have it. I have to tell you, it feels really good to have the sitemap finished because it gives me some clarity on what I'm building and how I'm going to move forward. Without that, it was honestly getting a little bit stressful thinking, what am I going to build? How am I going to build it? I know who I'm building it for. I know what the problems are, but what am I going to actually build? So the sitemap really helps with that. So as I was thinking about things, I came up with a general timeline of how I'm going to release this initial site. So right now it's getting towards the end of September 2020 and seeing as how these videos are a walkthrough of my process, it's going to take a while if I was going to do every single step to get to even this initial landing page launch. But I don't want you to have to wait that long to see a website developed and I don't want to wait that long to get my first version of this website out. So I was thinking it might be interesting to show you how I would quickly mock up and design a website in Adobe XD and then implement that using WordPress and a page builder. So for this beta launch, I'm going to do two weeks of design work and then two weeks of development work. And in a month from now, we should have a website launching. But most importantly, you'll have a good idea of how I built it and how I did it. Essentially, it's a four part quick series on designing and launching a website. And truth be told, I'm anxious to get this out the door, as you can probably tell. It's going to be a lot of fun, but then after that, I'm going to come back and revisit things and really dive in a little bit deeper with those specific topics that I want to cover so that you understand the entire framework of how to build a website and especially how to work with clients and how to go freelance because anyone can learn how to build a website, but learning how to work with clients and learn how to build a business is a whole different thing. So let's explain what we talked about. No, there is too much. Let me sum up. Well, I said this in the last video and in this video, but having a sitemap makes everything so much easier when you know the structure of your site. It's also important to be able to pivot with your approach. Initially, I was going to build out a very extensive site and take a long time to do it, but then I realized we want to get this thing up right away. So let's jump in, get a quick version of a smaller site done, and then we'll work on building it out later on. So we went from a big picture to an itty bitty picture. At the end of the day, building your sitemap is really about taking the content, and the functionality of your site, bring them together, find out where they matched, and then build a structure that serves the audience with that information and functionality. And that brings us to the question of the week. I wanna know, what is your favorite way to make a sitemap? Have you made sitemaps before? What do you use? Adobe XD, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, pen and paper, crayon, wood carving, ice sculpture? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so what are the next steps? Now that we have the sitemap figured out, this is how I'm going to roll out the next few videos. In the next video, I'm going to sketch and design a wireframe for each of those three pages of the beta site. In the video after that, I'm going to set up a high fidelity mockup of all of those pages in Adobe XD. In the third video, I'll build out a structure in WordPress of the site. And in the last video, I'll use a page builder, either Elementor or Oxygen, I haven't really decided yet, to put together the finished website. I'm really looking forward to this. And if you want to get in on the action, be sure and subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss a thing. And don't forget to smush the like button. I'm sorry? Smush. I said smush. Smosh? Smat. Smash. That makes more sense. Um, smash uh, the like button. If um, Yeah, if you could do that, that would be fantastic. If you could uh, smash... The like button, I would really appreciate that. And that's it everyone, one site map down, one beta website launch to go. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. And if you have any questions or have suggestions on design content you'd like to see, be sure and hit me up, uh, social media, at Akamai Websites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or leave a comment below. Because you know, you gotta do it now while my subscriber count is low because next week when I hit that silver play button, 100K number, Woo, that's going to, um, yeah. Hey, and you know what? I want you to have a wonderful day because you deserve it. And while you're at it, stay Akamai.